LinkedIn is the biggest social media platform for job search and recruitment across different fields today. Get started or up your game with tips from LinkedIn professionals. Welcome to the broadcast employer branding and recruitment specialist Jarko Dahlström from Finders Seekers and internationally acclaimed LinkedIn expert Tom Laine. Viewers, you can participate by sending us questions via chat. Riku, could you tell us how does that work? Thank you, Emma. A reminder for all you viewers out there that you can participate this broadcast by sending your questions via chat box. You can ask your questions at any time on this broadcast and we will address them, some of them, at the end of this broadcast. Tom, let's start with the basics. Uh, why should a job seeker have a LinkedIn profile? What sort of additional value does it bring to job search? That's a good question. Um, I think uh, no, not all people have yet re to realize that uh, LinkedIn really is not just for the highly uh, educated or the specialist or, or top management for, well, different purposes, of course, not just recruitment and, and for, for seeking jobs. But um, overall, I believe uh, roughly about uh, 1.5 million Finns already use LinkedIn. That already should tell us that it's, it's a, you know, it's a more, more or less a marketplace for all kinds of, uh, of uh, skill set and opportunities. But um, based on uh, Duritori, which is one of the uh, top Finnish uh, recruitment service providers, um, according to their annual study, the uh, national recruitment study, uh, I believe uh, the last seven years LinkedIn has been ranked as the number one recruitment tool um uh, from uh, you know based on, on the responses of finnish recruiters so of course for a job seeker it would be a beneficial platform to be uh, on as well that's where the recruiters hang out well tom uh, what are the key aspects that have to be a certain way on one's linkedin profile well, it's more or less a resume, but uh, with, uh, with uh, somewhat more detailed information about one's uh, work experience, education, and perhaps uh, these days also about the personality a little bit. So it's not just uh, the, uh, what, what we uh, usually talk about in, in uh, job seeking, that you should narrow down your expertise to one page or two page long CV or resume or job application, but it's rather a more in-depth look into what you're all about, what you've done, what you've achieved, what you're interested in, of course. So you, you need to claim a little bit of your, your own space within the you know, LinkedIn users to explain what you're all about and what you're, what you're really looking for. That's just as, as important as what you've done before. But there's plenty of uh, content that you can add. It's not just uh, you know work experience and, and education, but also different kinds of accomplishments, as LinkedIn calls them. Uh, it, it may be about publications, patents, test scores. It may be uh, some projects that you've done uh, in the past, your language skills, and of course, uh, public recommendations as well. Well, Jarkko, uh, as a recruiter, what is the first thing you look at when entering someone's LinkedIn profile? Yeah, well, uh, I might uh, go to someone's LinkedIn profile in different reasons. For example, of course, recruitment is one of the reasons. Another reason is definitely if I want to just uh, grow my network. Uh, but first, what I look at LinkedIn profiles is definitely the headline, uh, which tells you sometimes uh, the job title, uh, sometimes uh, also other information, for example, if the person is looking for a job or what kind of interest the person has or something like that. So that's kind of a, the first thing that I uh, see or first thing that I watch. Uh, not, not really the uh, profile picture or, or something like that, but mostly the headline. And of course, there is about Jackson, which tells more about the person, what kind of things the person is interested in or what the person has done before it's kind of a summary of all what you have done or what you want to bring out and definitely as tom said it's kind of a resume so uh, the experience section is very important because if, if i want to recruit someone i want to see kind of uh, the cv uh, what kind of background the person has so those are the 
uh, definitely the first things that I look as a recruiter. Well, Jarko, what other aspects should be a certain way uh, in addition to these you already mentioned? Well, one, one of the important things is definitely information. I'm looking for information. So, so one aspect is definitely that everyone should have a lot of information in their LinkedIn profile. When, when I go to see someone's profile as a recruiter, I want to see not only the job titles. Let's say, for example, I'm looking for, um, let's say, sales manager. Uh, sales manager position is so different in different companies, so the title doesn't say anything to me. I want to see more, more information. They, people should open up what kind of role they have, what kind of responsibilities they've had, and so on. So as much information as people can bring to LinkedIn profile, the better it is uh, from the point of uh, recruiter. Well, Tom, uh, should a LinkedIn profile always always be in English? Well, uh, you need to understand that even if LinkedIn uh, looks and feels and is often referred to as as a more of a tradition, one of its traditional social media services, it's very different to many of uh, of the other tools that you may be using. LinkedIn may look like you know it, it, that it's all about networking and and you know publishing conversations, whether it's articles or status updates. Uh, group complications perhaps, but um, underneath there's a very strict sort of a backbone how LinkedIn thinks that you should be using the service and, and of course how people tend to use the service. What, what are some sort of common practices? And one of those common practices and of course something that LinkedIn actively supports as well is that people do searches. Do searches on, on jobs, or searches on people, searches on content, on, on uh, different kinds of things. And the most common language all across, all over, all, all over the world, just about the, each and every country where LinkedIn is available, English is the default search language. That goes especially to, uh, to searches related to people. So when we look at, for example, let's say that the Yarko mentioned these sales managers. If I would be looking for a sales manager, what I would do is I would just generally write the job title or any other sort of technical requirements or industry keywords to the LinkedIn search bar and then you know, press enter. When I get the results, I get to narrow down the search result with some of the more advanced filters like you know, geographical location or, or perhaps um, uh, the uh, industries, uh, uh, some other filters as well. So when I do the search, basically anywhere in the world, I, I conduct it in English first. So for foundability, language, English language is much more important. But then again, every other content type, like for example, web status updates or advertising or job ads, they may be in any local language, you know, based on who we're targeting with our advertising or our content. But maybe the personal profile should always be English first and be, you know, Finnish or other native languages when as a secondary language. Well, Tom, is it enough to have a profile on LinkedIn or should a job seeker uh, use the platform in other ways also? Well, back in the day, I started using LinkedIn roughly about 17 and a half years ago. And there was only so many people uh, on the platform that, you know, just creating a, a beautiful profile and wanting people to, to, you know, find it or get in touch. If they have something to offer or something to talk about, then yes, that was enough. But now that we have so many users, roughly about 800 million globally and one and a half million Finns, you know, it's, it's just often not enough. Of course, recruiters and customers and whatnot, they do a lot of searches and they go through people's profiles, but you know, if, if I wanted to get things done fast and efficient, and if I wanted to really influence on how I'm being found and, and, and who, I, who I want to be, you know, talking to or, or hired by, I would, of course, network with, you know, headhunters, recruiters, people working in interesting companies, get in touch with them, create interesting content that people actually realize that I, I'm a job seeker, that I'm, I'm, I'm good at something, what my sort of uh, uh, values may be, there are different levels and, and what kind of you know, content we should pro, uh, produce. But of course, you know, doing a job searches at the LinkedIn job section, perhaps saving job alerts for yourself, uh, attending LinkedIn groups. Sometimes there are some of the more hidden jobs available and so forth. There's plenty of options that we can do, but you know, I, I, I do understand then again, 
that people uh, have a limited amount of time to spend on LinkedIn because they do often also uh, hang out on other platforms and, and you know they, they want to look for jobs at Monster or Oikoti or Doolittle or other platforms. So LinkedIn is a great tool and I think it's the most important tool for a job seeker these days but it shouldn't be the only one of course. There's plenty of other options as well. Well, Jarko, how closely does a recruiter look at uh, one's activity on LinkedIn posts and comments and or lack thereof? Well, uh, as said before, the first thing that recruiter uh, or myself looks from the LinkedIn profile is definitely the headline about section experience and so so forth. Uh, and if I get interested in that person because uh, I've looked those sections first, uh, then I want to know more about this person. I want to see what kind of discussions this person has going on. Uh, does the person has uh, some blogs or uh, what kind of comments? Is it, it helps me as a recruiter to get more insight about the person, about the personality, about the experience and so forth. So. Uh, That's not the first thing that I will look, but that's something that I will look after if I get interested in that person and the profile. But definitely it's something that interests me. It is very interesting for me, definitely. Well, Tom, uh, how carefully should one consider the network they are building uh, in LinkedIn regarding connections? Is it uh, quantity over quality? Actually, I'd like to think so, yes, because quantity itself has major impact on, on, on actually quite a few things, how we're, we're getting different types of benefits out of LinkedIn. I mean, the network size itself is directly connected to how many people may find our LinkedIn profile on the search results when they look uh, to do a search on any keyword that can be found on our, our LinkedIn profile. I mean, all the content in our LinkedIn profile helps us to be found, but LinkedIn arranges the search results in a way that those that are closer to you, uh, what comes to the network, network, network levels, so to say, you know, direct connections or friend of a friend and so forth. So the closer you are to a person, then, you know, higher the search results, uh, higher you will be found on search results. So the more people you actually have in your LinkedIn, LinkedIn network as direct connections, the more people can easily find you when they are looking for certain skills and for certain certain other keywords. But uh, it's not the only thing that the network size uh, actually has influence on. Because also, the closer you are at the network levels, the more information LinkedIn provides from your profile. So those are, that are direct connections to you get to see all the content in your LinkedIn profile. But for example, if Jarko would be my third level connection, so a friend of a friend of a friend, he would only be shown roughly about half of my LinkedIn profile content. So not all information would be available anymore. And that may be that crucial piece of information that would make actually get Jarko interested in me. But I would be, you know, providing uh, something regarding my work experience or my contact details even. That may be the crucial thing that Jarko is, you know, interested in asking, asking more about, you know, what I'm good at or what I'm interested in. But it's not, not just uh, available for him if it's, you know, far out in my, in my network. So that's one thing, but of course, then again, uh, the ability to contact uh, people. So only the first level connections get to send each other free messages. Second level, we get to see all the content in your LinkedIn profile that uh, also includes, for example, what Jarko mentioned, the about section where usually job seekers add their contact details. So that's one op option to get in touch. But the further out, again, we go to, uh, uh, to the network levels, then the less abilities we have as in teachers to get in touch with people. And of course, one more thing would be content creation. So when we publish content on LinkedIn as in status updates, uh, it's only be only shown to our direct connections at first, unless they start reacting uh, actively. And then you know, LinkedIn, LinkedIn then um, you know, expands the distribution of our content. So I think all the relevant things like in, you know, foundability, contactability, ability to understand our skills or, or, or interest or whatever is written in our LinkedIn profile, as well as our our own reach with our communications, all are related to the LinkedIn network size. That said, of course, there needs to be some quality in place as well. So it, it couldn't be random strangers from the other side of the world, right? So it, it has to be somehow relevant. And starting with your you know, colleagues or, or, or 
or school buddies or customers or uh, you know people living in uh, living in the same city or same country working in the same industry similar similar background these are usually the people are, that are that, that are the so-called quality people in your network that may have something relevant to offer you or, or otherwise beneficial for you uh, in the future well, Jarkko, employers can use LinkedIn in many ways, uh, one of which is posting job ads there. Uh, what should job seekers know about employers' activity on LinkedIn? Well, um, of course, if, if someone is looking for a new job, of course, the new job is important at, uh, as, as self, but uh, you need to know more about the company. Do you want to work in that company or what kind of company that is. So definitely uh, job seekers should um, get to know about the company more in LinkedIn because nowadays companies have LinkedIn profiles, own LinkedIn profiles, and there might be different sections where you can find more information about, of course, about the job itself, what it is, uh, what kind of uh, position it is, but of course, what kind of company it is, what kind of employer branding activities they are doing. Because um, in a, in this uh, company LinkedIn profiles, you can find, for example, there is a live section where you can find more about the uh, company, um, what kind of people there there are, what kind of atmosphere there is, and so forth. And of course, there is a people section where you can find the actual people who are working at that company. So you can browse those and uh, check uh, if there is some that kind of professionals that you want to work with. So there is a lot of content that as a job seeker, you su should actually go through. And um, uh, it also helps when you are applying to some uh, open position because first you find the company, uh, you get to know the company, about the culture, about the people. It's easier to apply to that uh, job position because you, you can tell more about uh, how you, how your experience, how your personality actually fits to that company and, and the uh, whole uh, kind of, um, yeah, the atmosphere in that company. So definitely there's a lot that you can find from that company. And if you follow these people who are working at, uh, in this co uh, some company that you are probably want to apply to, um, you can more for more information. You probably can ask from them, send a LinkedIn message that, hey, I just saw this open position. Uh, what do you think about this? Could I be a fit? this or could you give me some tips so definitely you should um you should search those uh, company profiles well Jarko, we have uh, established that a job seeker should have a linkedin profile uh, but does a job seeker need a resume in addition to a linkedin presence these days um i would like to say no because uh, for example for me uh, I don't need a resume, different resume from a job seeker. For me, enough is an uh, extensive LinkedIn profile where I can find all the information and the background and the experience and so on. But definitely still, there are a lot of companies that require a different CV, resume, that you have to send them. Because, for example, recruitment, some recruitment systems they need resumes. Uh, some companies might be kind of, a, I would like to say, old fashioned in that way that they still require a different CV. But uh, I hope that we are going to that direction that only the LinkedIn profile would be enough. Before we move on to the chat questions, Tom, uh, would you summarize uh, how can a job seeker optimize the use of LinkedIn when looking for a job, whether they have a specific company in mind or they're just networking? Actually, I was wondering um, if, I, if I could add a little bit to, to what Jarko answered earlier regarding the, uh, these two things. So first of all, um, recruiters, of course, often you know, look at the LinkedIn profile, they, they may get in touch directly or when they get one's LinkedIn 
LinkedIn application, like you can use your LinkedIn profile as an application within your LinkedIn job section. But um, of course, LinkedIn's approach as well, like as a technical tool, is towards that, uh, that you wouldn't have to have a separate CV. LinkedIn is trying to build um, a, a full recruitment system, a so-called so applicant tracking system, so that uh, all activities related to the recruitment process could be handled within LinkedIn. So they are very much pushing on towards that sort of, sort of approach, like, you know, the PDF CVs and actual separate CVs or resumes uh, applications would be, you know, unnecessary. And, and when it comes to the employer brand and, and you know, building sort of interest towards an organization, what I would really like to see more is that organizations would start to tell a little bit more about, you know, the values and the culture. So it's not just so much about what we want uh, the, the, you know, job applicant to have as, as an educational background or work experience, but rather what we have to offer. And some people may be more interested in, in you know, interesting projects, some, somebody's interested in, in what kind of clients they may have, somebody's interested in, in some sort of uh, for, for, for some new technology that, that they work to work in, about the possibility to you know, get, uh, get to do an international career. There may be plenty of other things that actually influence a job seeker rather than just the you know, traditional you know, salary and, and, um, and a job. And we're, we're moving towards uh, you know, more value-based recruitment from both sides. I mean, companies want to find cultural matches so that the people have you know, a similar approach to work or, or, or you know, are, are valuing the same things. And the same goes with job seekers. They want to see more of, of the organizations, what, what is the actual employee experience rather than you know, uh, just what, what, what they have to offer us. So uh, I think it's a major shift that's going on. But um, coming back to the actual question, um, I, I think, you know, um, to start with, you know, start networking with just about everybody. You know, add your LinkedIn profile, link to your email signature or, or your business card, add it to your, your job application so that recruiters are allowed to go through your LinkedIn profile. Get recommendations, get references uh, to your LinkedIn profile, start giving references perhaps even to those that you wish to write one to you. Be, be, uh, be you know, proactive getting recommendations. Fill out the you know, that, that's a good start. But then, of course, the outbound uh, sort of activity, uh, meaning that you should be actively discussing and, and you know, showcasing your expertise one way or the other, whether it is with status updates or articles or group uh, communications. Perhaps. And, you know, I, I think LinkedIn is a great tool in a sense that we get to choose how we, we want to be. There's no magic number of status updates that we have to do per day or per week in order to, to uh, achieve certain results. But, but you know, our LinkedIn profile accountability alone is important, and everything else is sort of constant. So we get to choose, so that's a good thing. Now it's time for your questions from the chat. Riku, go ahead. Thank you, Emma. Jark a interesting person asks, how do you see a should parental leave be mentioned in LinkedIn? Does it work in work history? Well, definitely you don't need to put your parental leave in LinkedIn, but as a recruiter, um, we want to see kind of um, uh, when we look the background, when we look uh, about the experience, if there is some gap uh, between uh, different jobs, there should be some explanation for that gap. But um, if you are okay to put your parental leave in LinkedIn, that's definitely fine, but you don't need to put that. Of course, as a recruiter, I understand that there might be gaps between different jobs and there, there could be hundreds of, of reasons. Um, so I don't really mind if there is some gap. Of course, I might ask. So in between this, what kind of things you do? Did you learn something new or like that? But if you're okay with that, to putting the parental leave, it's, it's fine. But you don't, definitely, you don't need to put that. Yark. A person named Cookie is interested if how does it look for you if the company or the employer doesn't post anything on LinkedIn? Well, if the company doesn't post anything to LinkedIn, um, I might ask myself that are they up to date? Because nowadays 
almost every company is in LinkedIn in some way. They might not be active every day or like that, but in some way they should be the, those companies in LinkedIn. But if a person doesn't post to LinkedIn uh, something, if you don't make LinkedIn posts or if you don't comment, uh, make activities, um, it, it's fine because we all, all are different. S uh, some of us, us w just want to check content, just follow people, follow discussions, but might not post so much. much. So that's okay. It's, it's not a problem. Jarko, we have quite many questions about how much a person should tell themselves about in LinkedIn. Is there restrictions on what you should share on LinkedIn? Well, you can share as much as you want about yourself. Let's, let's say it that way. And if you don't want to share something, that's totally fine too. But it's good to remember that in a way it's a professional channel. So it's not the same that you post something in Facebook or in Twitter posts or something like that. So it's a little bit more professional. But uh, of course there could be or there can be funny content like that also. But you can post as much as you are comfortable posting. So answer that doesn't answer anything. <laughs> Jarko, our viewers are interested about LinkedIn algorithms. Is there some sort of best time for posting stuff in LinkedIn for employer or recruit point of view? Well, uh, I'm not totally familiar with the algorithm. Um, I'm not sure is anyone, but usually when you post at morning, you know, before 9, 9 a.m., uh, it's most efficient that uh, that's something that we have seen that it's most efficient. And also kind of uh, after the working day, after 4 uh, or 4 p.m. 16. So at morning times, it's usually most efficient if you post something. Thank you, Jarko. We have some small technical issues with Tom. Hopefully, hopefully we can still continue with him. Uh, now let's check out a brief video. Welcome back all you viewers out there. Tom is with us right now. Tom, let's take a few questions from the chat. A proud rainbow is a LGBT person and wants to know, do I have to limit my gender at LinkedIn to strict black and white binary gender definition? Uh, no, of course not. I mean, uh, you don't generally uh, people don't specifically state uh, anything related, related to their sexuality because they don't consider it perhaps being relevant to, to their skills or, or abilities or industry. But of course, it's not restricted either. And LinkedIn has been promoting actively this, uh, I, I don't actually know the English name for it, but there's a certain, certain way that is especially um, actively 
used uh, within Twitter, but now also coming to LinkedIn, but people stay, but they are he slash him or, or she slash her or other, and, and uh, that's totally okay. Nothing wrong with that. And I know actually plenty of people that have added um, either, you know, rainbow signs or, or similar sort of uh, avatars or pictures to their LinkedIn profile to state uh, their sexual orientation. And that's totally fine. Tom, a LinkedIn is person. How about anonymity versus personality in LinkedIn job search nowadays? Um, I, I actually wonder what it means because, uh, uh, you know, when uh, recruiters use LinkedIn, they, they go through LinkedIn profiles. You, you're basically you're not uh, able to be anonymous. You know, somebody goes to your LinkedIn profile, they go through your skills, they go through your, your uh, perhaps work experience, they go through your background, educational background, and, you know, they get in touch with you in regards to what your name happens to be or, or what sexual, sexual orientation or whether you're, you know, um, a boy or a girl or, or, or um, other gender. But um, when we apply for jobs, um, as in you know job section and, and actually actually applying an individual open job opportunity, then of course uh, you know there's a possibility to send an actual actual resume or to get in touch with a recruiter to ask if it's you know um, certain uh, perhaps poss possible to apply uh, by other means. But there's no really anonymity in uh, in uh, job searching within LinkedIn as such. I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad thing. I personally don't really care what you know generally what the person's name would be or or what they look like if they're capable of doing a job i'm trying to find the best skill set or the best sort of match to the cultural fit or or the values that that the company represents that's what matters and i and i think people should perhaps focus more on that i i think that uh, uh that uh anonymity in some cases is a great thing within recruitment and, and i know that there's there's a lot of you know um a uh, lot of uh, examples of people that, that have been uh, you know put off by somebody's name or somebody's you know skin color we, we, i don't know if linkedin is the right tool to to uh, you know get rid of that but of course we need to try but personally i i don't really care if a person has a certain name or not i i think it's it's such, such an old approach but of course you know still important well Tom, how much a profile picture meant to you and do you watch other social media platforms if a person has attached to them to LinkedIn profile? Well, um, first of all, LinkedIn is one of these top tools uh, or the only that is fully business and professional content. So when I uh, when I find somebody with a certain skill set and I find their LinkedIn profile interesting enough, that, that I will get in touch with them. I will ask them to, you know, come to an interview or do a Teams interview. Perhaps I will assign them a, a, perhaps some sort of a technical or psychological test time, uh, or it could be that I ask them to send us a separate document document regarding their skills or, or educational background. But um, I usually don't bother going through somebody's Facebook or Twitter profiles. It's just not interesting interesting enough. It's personal content, and yes, sure. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, even the the uh, company wants to do some sort of a, uh, perhaps a, a um, risk assessment of on on a person, but you know that's usually not my job. I, I'm going through somebody's skills and trying to understand if they would be a match from the skills and the personality, uh, you know, points of view, and and you know that's it. Tom, to conclude, uh, what is the future of LinkedIn as a social media platform in job search? I wish I knew. I, I, I wish I had known that 15 years ago or 17 years ago or even even last year. Um, you know, LinkedIn is, as said, the top business social network or professional social network as such. So I don't think that is changing anytime soon. But um, of course, new thing, new new services come up all the time. Uh, recruitment is, you know, transforming itself in, into more ways of just uh, than, than uh, advertising for jobs or looking for individual profiles. It it may be more about, you know, somebody's ability to solve problems, or it may be somebody's uh, somebody's uh, ability to to perform great customer service. And then, of course, there are are different means to try to understand who would be good in, in something like that. I hope LinkedIn can keep up with the competition of you know, other, 
other types of recruitment and, and, and other platforms. And I, I don't think anything is going to change anytime soon. LinkedIn has such a big gap to, to um, any other service that would provide such you know, professional approach. But I also hope that there will be competition because I think LinkedIn also needs to step up. They, they can't just you know, stay um, as, as self-centric as they are. They are pretty self-centric. I, I hope they become more customer-centric and they start listening to the users and start creating, creating the kind of features that allow us to do a little bit more, a little bit different things perhaps. Thank you, Tom, for these great tips and thank you for watching and for all your great questions. Uh, if you started watching in the middle of the broadcast, you can check out the entire recording afterwards on YouTube or from our website, telive.fi. And before you go, please give us feedback on this broadcast uh, via the link in chat. Now, until next time, have a great rest of the day.